everybody, it's me, Jill, and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of New York City, Season 11, Episode 18, The Reunion Part 1. I missed you guys last week. We did not have a new episode, and I am super excited for the reunion, so let's get started. Boy, we barely even get small talk, which is... It's what makes the Housewives of New York City so good. There's just like so much content that we don't have to use a lot of filler. So he starts by going around the room, which he normally does, saying hello to everybody. We say hello to Sonia first, and she tells us she's wearing a Sonia by Sonia Morgan. $105 is her dress or whatever. And then Dorinda, and he's like, that's not a Giovanni. She goes, don't even say it, Andy. And then we kind of like skip Bethany, and he goes over to the other side with Luann, and he said, you weren't here last year, Luann. And he said, so how, how is your head coming into this reunion? My head is humble. I was totally self-absorbed, and I own that. Ramona leans over and she goes, I'm sorry, what did you just, could you repeat that please? Did you just say you were so totally self-absorbed? She's like, yeah, I own it. I don't think you ladies understand how difficult it is for me to be around you. <laughs> I know she meant because they were drinking, but I just think it's funny because like, it's probably just hard to be around them, period. <laughs> Next, we say hello to Tinsley who has a new line of lashes. He said, are you wearing them now? And she said, I am. And then Dorinda said, we all got a nice set. You can tell already that like Dorinda is coming after Lou, real hot, real fast. Even when he said, you know, that's not Giovanni, is it? She goes, no, it's Naeem Khan, I think is who she said it was. Then she says to Luann, I think you were trying to get something from his showroom, right? And we get a flashback to a few years ago when Carol was saying, yeah, he doesn't really let people borrow things unless you're like a big movie star or like he makes things for Michelle Obama. So she got knocked down a peg then. And then Dorinda said, so yeah, you can keep your $400 dresses. Now she's criticizing Giovanni. You're the one that introduced her to the whole Giovanni thing. I think Dorinda and Giovanni have had a falling out, probably because Luann is the best thing that ever happened to Giovanni. You know, I don't know. But so now she's throwing a dig at the Giovanni dresses being only $400. And Luann's like, great, thanks. Fine. I'm good with it. (laughs) All right. So after Tinsley, we move on to Ramona. He says, hi, Ramona. You're in Ramona blue. I see you never let us down. And she goes, I hope not. I try not to. And then Bethany goes, that's a deeper blue, though, which I was thinking the same thing. And she goes, yeah, it is. It's a deeper blue. She is just owning the entire color blue, no matter what shade of blue it is. Oh, and Ramona got new teeth. 10 on the top, 10 on the bottom. Although I will say this, she must have paid a pretty penny for them because they look pretty natural. And finally, we say hello to Bethany. Andy said, you know, I was thinking about this as you came in, that Dennis was actually here at the last reunion. And she said the last several, like at least the last three years, he was at the reunion. And he said, well, what did he like about it? And she goes, he liked the minutia. Like he just, he, you know, well, what did Ramona say about that? Well, why did she react that way? Like he, he loved that. And Andy asked her if she thought about him today. And she said, I think about him every day. He's very missable. Then she's kind of going through a lot of the, I don't know, I guess sayings he used to say all the time and stuff like that. We open up with a segment about how all the women have moved into new homes, basically. Sonia's new 1,300 square foot two bedroom apartment that she's happy in. Ramona's selling her place. We know that Dorinda's got her new apartment that has no signs of John in it. And Luann's new house in upstate New York, in Kingston. And then Andy asks Ramona, do you still think Kingston is not a a great neighborhood or something like that? Because she made that comment. Okay, side note, a lot of you guys who live in New York and know the area have also told me Kingston, not the greatest. Anyway, Andy said, do you still feel that way, Ramona? And she said, well, I'm just telling you, I have a friend who's in real estate and he's not even looking at Kingston for like 10 years. So, you know, you're ahead of the curve, Luann. (laughs) How's that for a backhanded compliment? (laughs) 
yes, it's still crappy right now, but maybe in about 10 years. Andy brings up the fact that Luann said that she can't live in the Hamptons because the paparazzi are all over her. He said, Bethany, you're a high profile person. Do you have an issue living in the Hamptons? And she's like, listen, I wasn't going to, I want to be positive here, but I have said before that Luann has a little bit of a God complex. She's got delusions of grandeur and all these people that don't have a problem, Kelly Ripa and Billy Joel and Jerry Seinfeld and all these people that live in the Hamptons without incident, Yet all the paparazzi are coming after Luann de Lesseps. I It just seems a little unbelievable. And Luann said, it's not without incident. And then we get to see these paparazzi pictures of Luann. She goes, I was getting the mail in flip-flops and a yellow sundress. I mean, it does happen. They were there. I mean, they are real. And she said, yeah, but when we were in Kingston out on your deck and you thought these boats were going by taking pictures of you and they weren't, they were just people going by in boats. They were not trying to take a picture of you and you're being paranoid. And she goes, yes, I guess I am a little paranoid. But you know, when you have a mug shot and you've been arrested, they do like to go after you. I don't think she's wrong, actually. I'm going to cut her a little bit of slack on this one because being arrested, I think the paparazzi do kind of come after her. What are they going to take a picture of Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah, maybe they do, but I don't think Jerry Seinfeld cares because he didn't do anything wrong and it's they're not going to be trying to get a picture of him that's unflattering and even if it is I don't think he cares and it isn't that Luann is more famous it's that she's got more notoriety because of the arrest and I think there is a certain element of oh let's see what she's doing now and even kind of a let's catch her in something let's see if she's drinking. Let's see if we can get like that kind of thing. So I don't know. I mean, do I think she has a God complex? Well, of course I do. It's one of the things I love about her. But I also think there might be just a smidge validity to her concerns. Okay, then we're talking about Sonia's townhouse again. And she said it like gives her hives. Just thinking about it um, makes her anxious. Um, but it is rented out again for even more for $36,000 a month. That's insane, you guys. Anyway, Dorinda is happy living alone without John there. Listen, I see him twice a week and that's enough, you know. I have my alone time and then I have my time to see him. Trust me, Dorinda. Twice a week is more than enough. I'm with you, girl. Then we find out that Ramona has accepted an offer on her home, a condo, I guess. And Andy so graciously lets us know that she had to drop the price a couple of times. And she goes, yeah, well, listen, you know, it's a very tough market. And I thought I could either hold out for a couple, whatever, how much more. But I, I, you know, is that going to change my life? No. So I'm just, I'm moving on now and being happy. And Dorinda goes, and now you can move into my building. And she goes, no, I think I'm going to move to. And there's this long beep. And I'm like, what's happening? And you see this look on everyone's face. Sonia's like, and Dorinda looks concerned. And then Andy goes, you're going to just say the address? (laughs) Yeah. Ramona has just blurted out the exact address of the home she's moving into. (laughs) And she goes, oh, so then it got bleeped out. Bethany's like, yeah, single men, come on over. There she is. Okay, now we see this big, long montage of Bethany and everything that kind of explains how this last year has been for her. All in one, like, three-minute montage. We get Dennis's passing, the horrific custody battle with her ex-husband, her wanting to sell part of skinny girl and saying it's it's too much i gotta let some air out of the tires i am overwhelmed her almost dying from having that soup with fish in it and yeah it was like just one thing after another after another and she's sitting there watching the montage and she's you know wiping her eyes and dorinda's next to her on the couch and dorinda's like it's almost over I mean, it was rough. It was rough for everybody. So it's done. And Andy said, so, you know, how how are you doing now? It's been almost a year since Dennis died. How are you doing now? And she said, I think I'm doing well. I really do. I think I'm doing much better. 
So then Andy says to Luann, there were a lot of vague references to how Dennis helped you. So how did he help you? And Luann goes, let me see if I can say this. Bethany goes, he got her a very, very powerful attorney, like one of the most powerful in the country. Dennis did that. Dennis got him for her. And that he was able to get information about Luann's case and help her. And Luann said, yes, things that even my own lawyer didn't know. And Bethany's like, right. Andy, and so how else did he help you? Luann's, Bethany, financial. He helped her financially. Oh my God, why don't you just ask Bethany how Dennis helped her? Because Luann doesn't seem to either want to tell you or think that she can tell you. And Bethany doesn't seem to have any trouble at all telling you. Okay, so then somebody asks, it might have been a viewer question about Bethany, were you dating the hot catering guy and Paul intermittently while you were dating Dennis? And she said, yes, okay, so with Dennis, we would break up and we'd be broken up for a couple of months. And I told him I want to meet somebody. And so she met the hot catering guy, which everyone was like, oh, thinks so cute. He is cute. And he was like, oh my God, he was like the hottest guy on the planet. And she's like, I know there was an age difference and I was in a bad place. It was just not the right time and um, just wasn't gonna happen and she knew Paul too I think she said she talked to Tinsley and said this is so weird but like I, I'm really into him and I just I'm not ready I was in a bad place just in emotionally in a bad place so then you know Dennis passed away and then this Paul came back into her life again and like courted her and everything and so she's still with him today and it's a really good relationship and as we know from the season finale, she bought a condo with him in Boston, right? Didn't they say that? Or a house or something? And he said, well, so then why don't we see Paul on the show? And she said, he is extremely private person, very calm, very conservative, doesn't want anything to do with this. And as you know, I'm like, you know, show it all, mention it all. And they kind of laughed at that. So then the next viewer question is for Tinsley. Tinsley, don't you think it's rich that Bethany says you don't share anything about Scott, yet talking about her boyfriends is always on her terms? And Bethany's like, I knew this question would come. Well, yeah, because it's a good question. <laughs> And Tinsley said, well, you know, Scott, too, didn't want to be on the show. And keeping that balance was very hard. And Bethany goes, and I, I thought of that. I really did. I really thought about that. And, you know, not only did you meet him on the show, he agreed to come on. He signed a release. And then he gave you that big, giant Kentucky Derby secretariat thing of flowers when we were in Cartagena. And, yeah, that was obnoxious. Do you remember that giant heart with their initials in it and it was made out of 365 roses for 365 wonderful days together and she said well that was his way of being on the show without being on the show okay Okay, then they asked Bethany about selling off Skinny Girl. Did you not do that? And she said, I did not. I got cold feet at the last minute because I just think the company didn't hasn't reached its full potential yet. So I ended up letting go some very high-salaried people. Sorry, high-salaried people. And I'm outsourcing more jobs because I just, I don't like managing that many people. Then Andy talks to her about her near-death experience, and she said, yeah, I mean, it was, it, it was crazy. It was insane. He said, it's interesting what you said about feeling like Dennis was, like, pulling you toward him. And she said, I, I know, and I know that sounds weird. Now, I wasn't, it wasn't something, like, I consciously thought. She goes, I wasn't conscious. I don't, it was just this feeling I had of him pulling me, and that is so him, that is so him, and he, Andy said, what do you mean, and she goes, like, just, you know, if he would, we'd be broken up, and he'd see me in a picture with another guy, and, him, and then it was like, oh, marry me, marry me, it was just, you know, he would, like, just try and pull me toward him when he, like, he would get desperate, 
And so she just said it was this feeling she had and now she just feels better. And everyone's talking about how the best thing that happened was that she got with Paul. She doesn't feel guilty about it like it was too soon because if Dennis didn't die, she doesn't think she would ever have found happiness. I think Ramona, of all people, said it was like a merry-go-round. And she goes, yes, and I don't think I ever would have gotten off. It would have just been this on again, off again thing with Dennis forever. And she just, she feels free now. And, you know, everybody's happy for her. Okay, now it is time to get into Luann and Dorinda. And like I said, Dorinda is not feeling the love. That is for damn sure. It's just a lot of like the Giovanni stuff and the Dorinda's throwing little digs like she says things like, well, I was there for you the first time you went to jail. And Luann goes, what do you mean the first time? And she goes, well, I, okay, that then the only time. And Andy's like, I mean, saying the first time really does imply that there was more than one and there was only one. She's like, okay, okay. But it's little things like that. If they didn't call her out on it and just let it go, the implication, of course, is that she's been to jail more than once. We're going back to the very beginning of the season in the Hamptons and Barbara's clam bake and Dorinda getting disinvited to that and how it was really Bethany's idea that Dorinda not come, not Luann's, But Bethany said in her defense, it was because Luann was making it sound like it was going to affect her sobriety. And then there was a whole big thing about how they had unresolved stuff from the end of last season because Luann wasn't even at the reunion last year. So they needed to work things out. Luann seemed to be upset that when Dorinda got to the Hamptons, she didn't even call Luann. I don't know, whatever. None of it seems like it was really that big of a deal to me. Okay, then Andy asks Luann, I think this was also a viewer question about, how, didn't you feel, did you feel bad when you saw Dorinda crying over your friendship? And she's like, well, I felt like crying too. And, I, and every answer that Luann gives is, yes, but I was hurt too. Or I felt like crying too. Or... I missed our relationship too. You know, it was like, yeah, okay, you felt all those things, but so did I, and I was hurt too. And that's all she ever focused on was how bad Luann felt. And that because she was going through rehab and everything that happened to her, the arrest, that somehow that gave her permission to have everybody just be concerned about her and that she didn't have to work on relationships It was just like people should have been coming to her. That's kind of my take on how Luann acted this whole season, you know? Now here at the reunion, Dorinda starts crying again. I was there for you. I was a good soldier. And she goes, yes, you were until you weren't a good soldier anymore. And then you hurt me. How do you think it felt to be heckled from the audience? All right, that was not cool. And no matter what Dorinda said, that was a heckle. Dorinda, I know, has since tried to pretend that she was just celebrating Giovanni. No, you were heckling her. But you had a reason. You were mad because she didn't invite John. And I believe she invited Scott. Luann claims that, yes, I did invite John, and I have texts to prove it. And, you know, I don't remember exactly, but I seem to remember this was sort of like an after-the-fact kind of thing. Well, then, okay, fine. Or maybe a last minute, someone couldn't make it. And so, okay, now John can come. Or I know that at least at the beginning, John was not invited. Oh, God. Okay, well, now the ladies are pulling out the receipts. Luann has it on her phone that John was invited. And Dorinda claims, no, that she also has texts saying that John can buy a ticket. <sighs> if he wanted to come. So she finally finds it on her phone and now Andy is reading it. It starts with she had just come back from a mammogram. Do you guys remember that from last season? I think I remember saying, who goes to get a mammogram the day they're gonna be on stage for like their first performance? I think Luann said that the mammogram was scheduled first and she just still went to it. Oh, Luann! Sweetie, your receipts are not helping you. 
Although she just, she's like, mm-hmm, yes, right, well, of course. She, like, stands by what she said, but it is not making her look good. So it starts with Dorinda saying, so Josh, the fat Jewish, has a table and John is not invited? Now, it has to have started before that because she's already complaining that John's not invited. But that's where we start with the text. And it doesn't matter because from this point on, it's bad enough for Luann. So I, we really don't need to go back. Dorinda's like, he's been my boyfriend for six years and he's part of the show. And Luann's reply was, I'm at a mammogram right now, but of course John would be invited. All you had to do was ask. I am kind of remembering this now, but Tinsley didn't have to ask. She just had a ticket for Scott. And Dorinda said, well, she said it was girls only. So that's why... She didn't ask if John could come. Anyway, Dorinda's texts go on to say he got invited by a third party, but he's pissed off, and that wasn't very kind of you. And Luann's response is, not my problem. Luann's sitting on the couch, and she goes, mm, mm-hmm. And this is so Luann. It goes on to say, it's my big night. A better response would have been break a leg. Oh, God, it is always all about Luann. It's just the funniest part to me is when Andy's reading it. Break a leg would have been a better message. Luann, that's right. Yes. She so adamantly stands behind every word of her text. <laughs> now Andy asks Luann if she thought she went like overboard with the fish room. And Luann's kind of like, well, yes, yeah, yes, I did. And then Bethany interrupts and she said, when I'm watching this show on TV afterward, when she apologized to you on the bed, after that you were like, well, I'm just glad that she realized what, you know, like you were really relishing that apology. Like you thought she needed to grovel. And Luann's response to that is that, you know, when I watched that back, I just... I felt really cold about it, talking about her own behavior. She said, I just, I, I was like, I can't cry. I can't feel anything. And I, I, I don't, I, and I'm not saying that I had it worse than, than anybody else, or I'm not saying that, but it's just been a really, really hard time for me. I, I'm, I'm not excusing my behavior. I'm not. Okay. So when she says, you know, I, I felt cold about myself and I just, uh, and for that, I, I just, and she gets up and she was like, I want to give you a hug. And so they hug and there's a big, long, sort of an awkward thing with the hugging and the faces. And, uh, and then she said, I can't stand you looking at me with such anger in your eyes. And Dorinda's like, I'm not angry. It's, I'm confused. It's just, you're just not the same Luann. And anyway, um, they are going to try to make amends. The others are kind of looking on with smiles, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know if they will or not. They do seem to have a long friendship, I think 13 years or something. So I don't know. Hopefully they can work it out. Dorinda even said, you know, in, in Luann's defense, I think that she was nervous and that it, she might have been looking for a way to get out, you know, like talking about the fish room and that maybe, you know, this was maybe the first time she was filming after re getting out of rehab and that she almost kind of wanted to stay in a hotel is what she's saying. So anyway, um, Andy said, okay, well, now that you've reconciled, I, I hate to go back, but Luann, when you came up with the idea of that Giovanni award for Dorinda, how did you think that was going to go over with Dorinda? And she said, well, you know, I just, I was trying to change the narrative. I just, I wanted to make it funny and, you know, take the sting out of it. And really that's all. And then Andy said to Dorinda, did you really get an attorney involved? And she goes, yeah. Oh yeah, I did. So everyone was kind of laughing about that. Anyway, Dorinda said, you know, I'm just so over this whole Giovanni thing. She goes, what, what are we all getting shares in it? And Andy goes, well listen to this and they play feeling Giovanni for everybody for like what seems like a really long time it's probably 30 seconds but to me it felt like an awkwardly long time to just see the ladies sitting there I mean you know Sonia's of course you know moving to it Dorinda's just sitting there Bethany's taking a sip of her drink Tinsley's kind of laughing and Luann is mouthing the words 
In fact, Luann goes, louder, it needs to be louder, turn it up. So funny. So they ask Dorinda, and she's like, you know what, I like her songs. I think they're catchy. Okay, and uh, with that, we wrap up part one of this reunion. There's still a lot more to go with these ladies, so I hope you'll join me for the rest. Thank you so much. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Jill Informed. Don't forget to leave a comment. What did you think of part one? I'd love to hear from you. And I will be back next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central Time for the next recap of The Real Housewives of New York City. Bye. Um.